Classics 107.9, your girl Lady B live from the crib as we enter week nine of this pandemic instruction to stay inside the house. With that said, we're going to check in with Dr. Monique Gary. Happy Monday, Doc. Happy Monday. How you doing today? Uh, we'll talk about that later because I need to know what to do for pain because I've been gardening. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk offline about that. For yeah, sure. it's, it's a whole sore thing going on. All right. What day are we coming back together? June 5th, ladies? So June 4th. It's 4th, Pennsylvania, right. The stay-at-home orders until June 4th. Okay, so with that said, what does June 5th hold for us? What is our new norm? All right, well, June 5th should probably look a lot like June 4th. Let me just say that. Uh, <laughs> it's more of the same. And, and the reasons why? Because of the same reasons. We still need more testing. We need more tracking. You know, and we need to be able to, to have some some kind of treatment for this. The treatment part we're working on, the tracking part we're working on, the testing part we got more funding for it. But we are currently, many of us are still in the, the red phase and they're doing it like the, the stoplight, red, yellow, and green. So in Pennsylvania, there's 37 counties that are in the yellow phase. Philadelphia and surrounding areas are still in the red. That means that life-sustaining businesses, those are people who can go out, schools are canceled, stay-at-home orders in place, large gatherings for prohibited restaurants and bars, carry out only, and only travel for life-sustaining purposes. Now, the people who are in the yellow phases, so that's more of the middle of the state, you know, the western uh, part of the state, they are able to gather less than 25 people. They can still do in-person retail and some curbside. They prefer delivery. Uh, indoor recreation, such as gyms, spas, they're opening those up. Restaurants and bars are carry out, and entertainment, still closed. Casinos, theaters, still closed. Schools still closed. Child care can happen, but you have to comply with guidance, uh, and people can congregate in places of worship in small numbers, okay? So that's the so, so realistically, Doc, with all of that said, do you think people are going to listen and follow the rules? Because I honestly don't think that they are. I don't think so, because they're not doing it now, you know? And, and we're still in right. the red phase. So I, I feel like people feel entitled, and like it's an infringement on their rights to ask them to wear a mask, just like it's asking a person to wear their, their shoes or pants in a, in a place. You know, you go into a business, you have to wear shoes. No shoes, no entry. No mask, no entry. Not because it's an infringement on a right. It's your preference, you know, but you have the right not to affect other people. And so... You know, and we have a right not to be infected by other people, too. So I, I think that there's a lot of people's personal preferences getting confused with their rights. I think people need human contact. We do. We need hugs. We need touch. We need to figure out, you know, ways to, uh, to be able to, to do that and to connect with people without touching them or making sure that we're staying safe with respect to the places that we've been and the people we've been in contact with. And that requires a level of responsibility that we all need to start thinking about. As you go about your day, where have I been? Who did I come in contact with? Because that determines who you can come in contact with. And we'll talk about that later in the week, knowing your personal level of risk so that you can know who you can be around because you have family members who are high risk. You need to protect those people you love. But no, I I don't think that, you know, it's going to be really difficult to get businesses, to get movie theaters, places like that to to not fill to capacity because that's what people want to do. That's what they're designed to do, you know, like ballparks, things like that. They're going to fill. So we have to really be very careful. I mean, even places like hair salons where you can get your hair done but you can't get it blow dried how's that work you know yeah, that's kind of strange that's strange that doesn't work for me at all i might as well do it myself <laughs> those of us who have a certain texture hair and require our hair to be blow dried let's just say it that way you know we can't, okay. we can't just go out with wet hair um and and so it's different for everybody and i think that's why it's going to take a lot of patience you know we're antsy we're anxious but we got to keep breathing deep we have to keep you know our sanity and our wits about us stay responsible to the people that we love even if we're not thinking about you know ourselves think about right. the people you love Well, you know, over the weekend, I watched the crowded boardwalks in New Jersey, and I just thought about that original graph that we spoke of nine weeks ago, that many people can infect that many people. And yeah, and and I just thought about all those people on the boardwalk. Aren't they going to have like a second wave of cases? Um, There is a huge fear that there will be a second wave if not in the summer, then in the fall. Uh, And Mm. so outdoor places, I will say this, as we look at where the safest places to be, outdoor seems to be the safest place because there's more distance between people people than if you're indoors with an air conditioner that's blowing the same air around. So, you know, I understand it. If you look at some of the beaches in Europe, they actually have circles in the ground for where people can be. 
space and they have like an umbrella. So each person has their own station and they're taking schedules. You can come in for the morning for four hours. You can come in the afternoon, but you can't do both. And so if we were to do a system like that, that would make a lot of sense for our beaches. That way we could then sensibly reopen. But it has to be in a way that makes sense, that doesn't involve greed, that involves safety, because Memorial Day is going to be here before we know it and people are going to be flocking to the shore. And we see already that, you know, there's a disregard and a disdain for wearing a mask. But yeah, yeah, I, I fear that we may see a, a, a rise and a resurgence of this. Wow, unbelievable. Well, Doc, happy Monday again. Thanks for your valuable information. I just hope and I pray that people continue to stay apart so that we can get back together at at some point in the near future. So I just hope people listen up and, and, and just care about themselves and care about others. Absolutely. Take your vitamins, you know, eat your vegetables and boost your immune system and look out for your family and friends in your community, everybody. That's right. And they can reach you out. Absolutely. You can find me on social media at Dr. Monique Gary on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Looking forward to hearing from everybody. Take good care. Take care. Peace and love. It's Classics 107.9. We'll be right back after this.